and Larry Black again. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the United States Middleweight Championship. Introducing the challenger. He's from Columbus, Mississippi, and is 31 years old, 5 foot 11 inches tall, and weighed in at 170 pounds. His American kickboxing record is 28 wins, 3 losses, with 12 of his wins coming by the knockout. In the red corner, welcome, please, Oliver Miller. And in the blue corner, the champion. He is 20 years old, 5 foot 11 inches tall, and weighed in at 164 pounds. With a record of 13 wins, no losses, six of his wins coming by knockout. He is the present United States middleweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Rick Rufus. Yeah. This middleweight United States championship is scheduled for nine rounds. Nine rounds in the middleweights tonight, and as the two fighters go to ring center, you see Oliver Miller from Columbus, Mississippi, Rick the Jet Rufus from Milwaukee. If you've never seen this kid fight, you're in for a treat. Believe me, 13 and 0, six wins by knockout. He's been in the sport a long, long time. As Bill Clark gives him their final instruction. This one should be a beauty, Truman. You're you're exactly right. You know, uh, earlier uh, I have sa I said that uh, Rick Rufus could be one of the finest uh, athletes in this sport. Scheduled for nine rounds. U.S. middleweight title on the line, and here we go. Rick Rufus fighting from the southpaw stance. And he goes up with the side kicks and works his way around the ring. Just Rick, underway in round one. Rick the Jet Rufus has some of the finest movement uh, that I've ever seen in a ring. Uh, he is a master of the ring. He has, he, he's unorthodox in as much as he can go either way, anyway, at any time. I think what a lot of our viewers may not realize that this is the first time they've seen kickboxing is the tremendous amount of balance it takes just to even bend your leg and stand on the other. And trust me, I know, and a lot of you that maybe have tried some of this would agree with me. It's just unbelievable how these fighters can get that leg up so high and then work their way around the ring as you see Rick the Jet Rufus do. And more importantly than that, work theirself around the ring when there's an uh, individual weighing the same weight as they are that's <laughs> trying to take them out. You got that right. And there's a good kick to the upper body that sends Miller back in the corner, but he retaliates with the left foot. Well, Rick Rufus will throw a lot of kicks to the body early, and that, what that'll do is it'll bring the arm down and set up a high kick that, that has knocked out several of his opponents. Both fighters trying to feel their way along here in round one. And there's a good left hand that followed the round kick connected on Miller. Oliver Miller is no slouch himself. Uh, he has a great deal of experience in the ring, and he packs a great deal of power, and he's got a great deal of confidence at this time. He knows that this is a pivotal fight for him. There was great balance there again by Rufus. He got tagged in the chest with that punch and somehow managed to keep his balance, use the ring ropes to stabilize himself, and he got off the kick to boost. He'll pardon the pun. Spinning back kick grazes Miller's chin. Miller yes. showed uh, exceptional uh, defense, Danny. Uh, this is something that we that we like to see. We like to see movement. And round one comes to a close. <laughs> Brad Nessler, Truman Irving, and Joe Corley ringside here in Atlanta. The nine-round middleweight bout into round two. Rick the Jet Rufus, the U.S. champion against Oliver Miller. That's Oliver Big O Miller. The big O. I think they call him Big O because he's taken out a lot of his fighters in his uh, 31, uh, in his 28 and 3 uh, record with that big overhand right. Rufus seems at this point to respect at least the experience of Miller, if not the punching power. He's been a little more cautious than I've seen him in some previous fights. Well, Oliver Miller has, has demonstrated in previous fights, and I'm sure Rick uh, the Jet Rufus has viewed some of the tapes, but in his previous fights, uh, he has shown that he has power, that he has quickness, and that he certainly has a, an ample defense, which he's shown here, because Rick has landed a lot of punches early on a lot of his opponents, something he has not done uh, in this fight. What about the fistic facts, Joe? How are they adding up so far? Well, you see the kind of force that Rufus has had in his front leg sidekick, measured by Saba. He had 368 
pounds in each one of his sidekicks. And when you deliver that to the body at the weight of these guys, that's what's causing Oliver Miller to be driven back. Rufus unbeaten at 13 and 0. That back leg roundhouse kick of Rufus packs 450 pounds of force. The one that just skimmed off Oliver Miller's nose. I was going to say it got about 270 pounds worth in Miller's midsection, maybe. That's the same uh, back leg round kick that knocked out his last opponent, Tony Smith. Now both fighters getting a little more active here in round two. Round one relatively even. Round two starting to wind down. Under 13 seconds as you see it in the corner of your screen. You still see a lot of movement out of these fighters. And if you get a lot of movement, uh, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to land uh, successful shots. Good combination by Miller as the bell sounds to end round two. And we follow Rick the Jet Rufus back to his corner. There was a lot of, move, was a lot of uh, action from Oliver Miller. Take a look at some of the action near the end of round two. Again, Oliver Miller did put forth some effort here, except the exceptional movement by Rick the Jet Rufus, and we'll see this coming up. The exceptional movement, most of the move, and that's what I like about Rick the Jet and some of these other fighters, that when they have that good movement, it's very difficult to land uh, clean shots. There's another angle. You see Rufus getting a little tangled up, coming in with that left round kick, and Miller tried to follow, but as Truman mentioned, a good defensive job by Rufus. That's a lot of people don't realize as important as the offense because you don't want to get tagged and you'll find yourself uh, not being able to use your offense very effectively. You're absolutely true. Both of these fighters are mobile. Both of them have a great deal of fluidity in their movement and uh, as a result we've seen a very competitive fight at this point. And a very close fight through two rounds. We head into round three. Rick Rufus has a lot of followers in this sport as we mentioned the profile on him earlier he's been at it since he was five years old 14 years of karate and kickboxing and here defending his u.s crown tonight in atlanta rufus you can see i think he thinks he's a little bit off he just can't quite connect and i would think that would frustrate him at some point of this fight if things don't improve but they get there a little bit i think they do one of the things that you've got to remember is that rick is a young fighter but he's got 14 uh, years of experience in the ring and he's an intelligent fighter and uh, he'll figure out Oliver Miller uh, somewhere along the line and, and he, he remains patient and I think he's going to be uh, remain patient he certainly shows that he will good straight left hand by Rick Rufus side kicks Rick Rufus is trying to throw that spinning back kick and he's also trying to throw that that round kick that uh, just about to say that and it and he threw it but Oliver Miller still has that good fluid movement and he's making a difficult target to hit. On the spinning back kick, Rufus delivers 720 pounds of force with the spinning back kick. Oliver Miller is at 533 in that category as far as pounds. Oliver Miller is probably a little stronger than Rick in the upper body because Rick is again is a, is a young 20 year old who's not fully developed but Rick has tremendous power in his legs. He's got a uh, strong strong legs. Looks to have almost more spring here in round three at the end of round three than he's had through the first two rounds. I think he's getting more in a groove. I agree. I think he's getting in the groove. He's getting a little more confidence. Uh, he's starting to feel the flow of the fight a little better I think. Uh, Oliver Miller definitely showing that there's a lot more fight left in him, though, and we've got round four in just a moment. Brad Nessler, Truman Irving, Joe Corley back at the limelight in Atlanta, Georgia. If you're enjoying our American kickboxing series, round one of that series, if you will, tonight, and we're in round four here. And this one's been kind of close, although it looked like uh, Rick the Jet Rufus got maybe a little bit of the edge there in the third round. From you know, I think this is where the decimal scoring really pays off because it was an extremely close fight, and had it not been for the fact that uh, there is decimal scoring, you might have to score that an even round. But if you can just take uh, two-tenths of a point off, then you can give that edge to one fight or the other. In that round, I'd give that edge to Rick the Jet Rufus. Decimal system basically is a fine tooth comb process of oh there's a big left hand and finally Miller backs up fine tuning by the judges is what that'll be about at the end of this fight if it goes the scheduled nine rounds it very well may come into play 
You know, we've talked about Rick DeJet and, we, and as well as he deserves it because he is a U.S. champion and he's undefeated. But Oliver, Oliver Miller is quite a puncher and quite a kicker in his own right, as well as we've seen his defensive skills. You know, he's a guy that says he wants a piece of Bob Thunder Thurman. He has to settle for Rick Rufus here tonight. You know, that's, that's, uh, I cringe when I hear that statement uh, because it's like saying, I'd rather wrestle with this alligator instead of uh, dance with this crocodile. <laughs> and he's got a crocodile in Rick DeJet Rufus. That he a does. A 20-year-old crocodile. Action in round four. Again, Miller 28 and three. He's won 12 by knockout. As we've said, Rick Rufus unbeaten 13 and 0, the middleweight champion, U.S. middleweight champion. I think that uh, Oliver Miller is going to have to be more active. He still has that good movement, but he's not throwing enough uh, enough at Rick Rufus to uh, stop Rick from, from from throwing his techniques. Big flurry here as we come to the close of round four, and round five may indeed tell more of the story of this fight, and we'll have it coming up shortly. It's excellent defense once again by both fighters. There was a flurry, but very few shots landed. Well, we're approaching the midway point of this one. We head into round five. It's scheduled for nine. Rick Rufus unbeaten. U.S. middleweight champion, his opponent, Oliver Miller, the Mid-South champion and the East Coast champion as well. And trying for a little bigger game tonight, U.S. middleweight belt. Brad, we're seeing two accomplished fighters here. What a, what a shot landed by Ricky Jet Rufus there. Tremendous left hook, Joe. Yes, that's right. 433 pounds Rick Rufus carries in that left hook to 398 of Oliver Miller's. As I was saying earlier, you're seeing two very accomplished uh, 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 fighters here. Both of these men were spawned from the, uh, the amateur ranks of sport karate, the point karate. And they show exceptional kicking techniques as well as exceptional hand techniques. And it's something to be admired in both of these young men. That right hand of Oliver Miller that landed then is the first hard one he's thrown. I should mention that when we were doing the Saba testing yesterday, he was hesitant to throw it into the bag, so we didn't have a measurement on it because he did have a sore right hand. And he just nailed Rufus in the middle of the head with it. I wonder if that could have injured it further if you'll keep using it. We'll keep our eye on that one as we go through round five. There came the right hand again. It missed. Again, it's excellent movement by both fighters. Uh, this is a defensive fight as well as an offensive one, and uh, it's a pleasure to watch two great athletes like this. Rick Rufus, again, 12 years, 11 years, the junior of Oliver Miller. And I would think over the long haul that may start to show, but so far Miller looks very fresh as well. We start to close down, and there's a spinning back fist that connected on the right side of Miller's head, although he says, nope, I got the glove on it. I think he did partially block that. Again, he showed he showed excellent movement, and he got that right hand up to block that or partially deflect it. It'll look good to the judges, though, and that might affect the scoring. There's the end of round five, and we keep it right here and follow Oliver Miller back to his corner. Again, Rick Rufus appeared to be the most effective kicker in that round, and uh, that will affect the scoring in the event that this is an otherwise even round. You know, on October the 18th, Brad, Oliver Miller is going to fight for a North American title in the light middleweight division down in his hometown of Columbus, Mississippi. And uh, I know he's very much looking forward to that. Ironically, he's fighting as a middleweight tonight where he'd really like to be a light middleweight. And uh, Rick Rufus, who's a middleweight champion, fights as a light middleweight tonight. Look at the power in that left hook. I think what saved... Here's a great angle of the spinning back fist. I think what saved uh, what saved Miller on that left hook was it landed high and the spinning back fist, of, of course, caught him on the glove. It did catch him on the glove, Truman. He was right. I thought maybe that one connected. It happened so fast, but he waved his right hand and well, said, no, I'm all right. Well, that's the advantage of being a referee. You're, you're supposed to watch those kind of things. The spinning back fist is probably one of the most dangerous weapons in karate. And one of the reasons it's dangerous is because you're, you're, you're getting that centrifugal force going when you make that spin. And not only that, but you're leaving your, person, your, your, your opponent exposed to your elbows in the event that he steps in. That is a good straight left. Speaking of step in, uh, Rick Rufus did step in with that straight left. We're in round six, scheduled nine rounder. There's a good left hand. First, maybe good combination by Miller of the fight. A left followed by a right hand. 
Rufus comes right back with that right foot and keeps it right up in Miller's face. Rick Rufus sometimes gets lazy with his uh, with his right hand. He's a left-handed uh, he's a left-handed fighter, uh, left-footed fighter anyway, and he gets lazy with that right hand, and that right hand falls a bit. And if it falls, that left he's, he's, he's open for that left hook. Looked like Nuriyev there coming across the ring, didn't he? He is a capable kicker. Really warming up here with his kicks in this round. Throws a combination and follows with a round kick that missed. Intelligence and mindset. The mindset of the corner and the fighter will play a big role the, at the, as this fight continues. Both fighters feel that they could do more, and both fighters will press. The fighter that stays the coolest and the most calm will probably prevail. We really see the experience of these two. And as we said, Miller, the older of the two fighters, but Rufus has been in the sport a long, long time, and you just watch their eyes, and these are... These are KG veterans, boy. They are not giving up much defensively. Defensively, rather, they're doing a great job and not trying to give the other an offensive opportunity. Well, I've watched Oliver Miller and Rick Rufus for quite some years now, quite, uh, quite a number of years, that is. Oliver Miller was a young uh, teenager uh, winning point tournaments around the country. Rick Rufus started as a five- or six-year-old. He entered tournaments in seven up in the, north, uh, the Northwest. Uh, in the Minneapolis area, Milwaukee area, Chicago area, and he's been at it ever since. You see the respect ever the two since. fighters uh, show for each other there. They slap gloves at the end of that round. We go over to the corner of Rick Rufus. Rick Rufus has uh, Larry Carnahan uh, working in his corner, as well as Dan Magnus. Um, you also see Rick Rufus's father, Pat Rufus, who is his trainer. He teases his karate trainer in that corner. Dan Magnus has an interesting story in his, himself. Is, see his head there in the upper right screen. He actually went through open heart surgery, Brad, to continue his karate career. Several athletic commissions around the country have had to allow him to fight when he brings his uh, heart surgeon in from uh, uh, Walter Reed or one of the big hospitals in the Washington area to prove to them that his heart is stronger than it was before the operation. Open heart surgery to that's, stay in the sport. That's just remarkable. That's another thing well governed by the PKC Joe is uh, the fact that the doctors are all here before the fights and all of that and all these fighters are thoroughly tested Before we get to the action we might also say that Dan Max Magnus is the only the only professional athlete ever to come back from open-heart surgery We're in round seven scheduled for nine and this one has the makings of maybe going the distance We expected action and we definitely have had a lot of that and so far neither fighter has been down and neither fighter has been injured uh, to any degree none whatsoever and I and I think the action is going to pick up here because both fighters uh, especially I, 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 I think the Oliver Miller corner uh, feels that they need to do a little more Rick Rufus has, has has been somewhat effective with his kicks and punches Oliver Miller a little less effective I think you know it's interesting uh, with Rick Rufus wanting to go down the light middleweight division both these guys want Bob Thurman I would have to say that if Oliver Miller wants Bob Thurman he'd have to Developed quite a bit more strength as, of style as far as staying in there with that kind of power. Rick Rufus, I think, could be the kind of fighter that could give Bob Thurman a lot of trouble, Truman. I tend to agree with you, and I tend to agree with you for a couple of reasons. One, Rick Rufus is stronger than he appears, and not only that, he has that exceptional movement. Uh, Bob Thurman is a straight-in type of fighter who likes to pin you on the ropes. Rick Rufus will not allow that. He moves in and out, and then he may even go between your legs. That round kick connected, and you saw the sweat fly from Miller's head as he had to back up. There's a big right, uh, left hand, rather, by Rufus. Oliver Miller, Oliver Miller starting to press, as I thought he might, because he feels that he needs to do something, and that's setting it up for Rick Rufus. Rick Rufus is remaining cool, and I, and I think he's doing a good job. Miller continues the attack, but Rick Rufus has had the better of it. Now a good combination by Miller. That left hand definitely... Felt strongly by Rick Rufus. He comes back with a left uppercut of his own. I, Rick Rufus is answering uh, Oliver Miller's call. Great uppercut again as we close round seven. And boy, that was a minute and a half of action. First 30 seconds was a little slow, and then they really picked it up in that round. There were fireworks at the end of that round. There were fireworks, and I think, again, the fireworks came about, came about because uh, both fighters feel the urgency to do something. Here we see Rick the Jet throwing some punches, none of them landing. Oliver Miller still still has a good defense. Less movement, however. 
There's a good left hand. I think that partially slipped. We still have good movement from these two fellas. Uh, Rick Rufus showing a little more movement. You see the intensity and the concentration as Rufus gets that round kick in. The round kick does get in, but uh, again, there's exceptional movement on this on, on the behalf of Oliver Miller, and it's partially, uh, it's not deflected, but it, but it does not hit solidly. 450 pounds of impact force is what that back leg round kick registered at with Saba Fistic facts. When we worked out Rick Rufus eighth yesterday, round. we're ready to head into the eighth round. Two or less to go. Bill Clark, third man in the ring, has done a good job. He's had very little to do, really, though, in that these two fighters have a lot of experience and know when to clear out of the way, it seems. And there's been constant action. Rufus a little more flat-footed now. We've seen him bounce around the ring for seven rounds. Whenever he's flat-footed, you can look for him to throw that big left hand. He throws it straight and he aims at the chin uh, and he doesn't care if it lands in the face or the or the or the chest. But he, he tricked me. He threw that jump back kick. He was definitely waiting for something, wasn't it? That was a 360. That's just amazing. He gets remarkable elevation off that too. He was about three and a half feet off the canvas when he swung that leg around. Rick Rufus, unbeaten at 13 and 0. Oliver Miller, 28 and 3. 12 of his victories have been by knockout. The back leg is one of the most difficult kicks to throw with both legs. Well, I know I can only do mine with my right leg unless I'm dreaming. But Rufus kicks extremely well with both legs on the back kick, left leg and right leg. I was going to say, I think he did those in different directions, didn't he? Rufus not only kicks well with both legs, but Rufus comes at you from different angles. And it's very difficult to, uh, and, and I must add that Oliver Miller is doing a fine job of avoiding these kicks, but it's very difficult to stay out of the way of his kicks because he comes from so many angles. Oliver Miller has spent the better portion of eight rounds trying to cut the ring off on Rick Rufus, and Rufus with that constant side-to-side -side movement, and it doesn't seem to matter, as Truman said, which way he goes, has not allowed Miller to cut that ring off. There's that left hand. Uh, when he when he plants, he's going to throw that left hand uh, unless he switches up and throws something very flamboyant like that uh, 360. And we almost saw another jump back kick. He just ran out of room, or we would have seen it. And that ends round eight. Rick Rufus trying to hold on to the U.S. middleweight crown. He'll go to his corner for final instructions before the ninth and final round coming up. Way ahead. Again, Larry Carnahan and Dan Magnus in the corner of Rick Rufus. We might mention that Andre Taylor is working the corner of uh, Oliver Miller. One, two, last round, son. One, two. One, two. And of course, they're urging him on. Last round, last round. Trying to muster a little bit more energy for that final two minutes. Good looking crowd on hand here at the Limelight tonight, Joe. There's Victoria Johnson, former penthouse pet of the year, also a former karate student here in Atlanta, Georgia. This place draws that type of crowd even Mrs. without a big night like this. Mrs. Sheila Abernathy there with Jim. The newlyweds. Jim Abernathy Sports promoting this event tonight here on ESPN. We hope you've enjoyed it. We've got more to come. Two more minutes in this one or less. Round nine. I've got to believe that uh, Oliver Miller's corner has, has urged him to go in and put the pressure on Rick Rufus. Try to make this young man fold. Uh, I don't think he's going to fold, but, they, but he's got to do something. He's not winning the battle uh, on, the, on the outside because Rick is, is an extremely flexible and able kicker. Remember, that decimal system will allow you to split hairs, as it were, too, with the scoring. And in our opinion, at least, we feel like Rick Rufus has the edge here in this ninth round, although Miller continues to be the aggressor. But Rufus moving and throwing just a little bit of everything. And look at the movement he's still got left in those young legs. Wouldn't you like to be 20 again, Truman? Uh, <laughs> I'm not much older than that now. Okay. Rick Rufus. Circling and waiting for an opportunity. Oliver Miller is having a difficult time closing in on Rick Rufus, and when he closes in, Rick shows that exceptional defense and fluidity and movement, so he did get him there. Got a good right hand in, although Rufus seemed to shake it off well and continues to circle around the ring. That one just missed. 
Ken Miller with a good defensive effort. He's done a good job of shedding the punches and the kicks throughout this fight. He certainly has. Spinning back fist missed. Roof has followed it with a kick. Winding down here, ninth and final round. It's been an active. Rick Roof has just threw a, 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 a lead jab, something that we've not seen much of from either of these fighters tonight. And uh, that might be a telling story. If he could get that jab on track, either one of them, it might set something up. Well, it's not going to have time now. As we're coming to a close of this one, final five seconds. One of the few, one of the few jabs that we saw, and it was an effective jab. Uh, I think that both fighters needed to throw more jabs and take a little more time developing uh, what was happening. Well, we've seen nine rounds. We don't know at this time who won this one. Seems to be a relatively close bout. We're going to find out and get the official decision when we come back. We've got more PKC American kickboxing coming up from Atlanta with a decision after this work. Well, Rick Rufus and Oliver Miller win a very tough and active nine rounds. Let's find out who won it. And we go to our ring announcer, Larry Black. Larry, Larry, Larry. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the decision. Remember, we're using the PKC decimal scoring system. Judge Chapman scores the fight 90-89. Judge Keeney scores the fight 90-87.2. Judge McLaughlin scores the fight 90-87.6. The winner by unanimous decision, the United States middleweight champ, Rick Rufus. Well, Rick the Jet Rufus out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, runs his record now to a perfect 14-0, and, and he beat a tough cookie tonight in Oliver Miller. And the scoring was close on one judge's card, not so close on the other two. Joe Corley's with our winner, Rick Rufus. Joe? You know, we've said to Rick before that sometimes he looks a little bit bored in the ring. Tonight you look bored with the decision. Are you happy with it? No, not really. Uh, due to my sparring partner being 6'3", uh, my timing was off just a little bit. It seems like some of those jump spinning uh, back kicks, 360s you threw, went a little bit high. Have you been throwing those at your sparring partner? Uh, yes, I have. That was supposed to be a surprise attack on Oliver Miller, but in this case, it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Your legs seem to be so flexible. You move them around as easily as I do my arms, and I hate you for it. <laughs> what, what gives you the ability to kick like well, that? Well, I credit that to... Uh, uh, Mr. Aaron Free winning the uh, power stretch a couple years ago at the Battle of Atlanta. I used that during my training, and it uh, helped very uh, much so. You're kidding. So, quick, quickly, you want Bob Thurman or Joni Terrio? Well, right now, I want a lot of people, but I'm going to leave that up to the right people and make the right decision. Rick the Jet Rufus, a nice young man who does the job in the ring, like Brad said. He could be the kid next door, Brad. All right. He's the...